Migrants and mobile populations across West Af Western Central Africa are heavily affected by the consequences of the measures taken by government to prevent the spread of the COVID-19. As the number of confirmed cases in the region dramatically increases, preventive measures, uh, preventive measures rather, such as border closures and suspension of non-essential activities already have a heavy socioeconomic impact on the populations, including returning migrants, their families and communities. Now, since 2017, over 78,000 migrants have been supported with voluntary return to their countries of origin through the EU IOM joint initiative. And many of the 32,000 migrants who received economic support as part of their reintegration assistance have set up micro businesses. Joining us on this matter is Eni Itong Ibironke, who is a media liaison officer, the Migrant Project Nigeria. Good morning, Eni Itong. Good morning, nice to be here. Thank morning. you for coming on. You. Now, uh, this is clearly a mark of desperation. Uh, why are people still willing to risk their lives in such a way at this time? Well, thank you very much for the question. Obviously, it's clear that it's a mark of desperation, but the way it is in the minds of migrants, they're weighing the options that they have. If we stay back in our countries of origin, we're likely going to be die. We're going to die. The economic hardship. There's no hope for us. That's the mindset that you have for a lot of migrants that are going. It's a search for greener pastures. The same narrative that has been ongoing for a while. And then they have to say, okay, there's coronavirus. But then a lot of the people on the streets, a lot of people in Africa, really feel that the incidence of coronavirus is not real. Something is not real. Some believe that it's only affecting a certain type of people. And then some just believe, have blind faith that they cannot be affected. I mean, we are Africans and we don't die from diseases. I don't know why those notions exist. So it's a matter of, I'll rather take my chances. I will go that way. And whatever it is that happens, happens. But let me still know that I gave it a shot. That is what you find is happening with a lot of migrants that have still decided to embark on this journey, as crazy as it may seem, with all that has been said and all that has been populated already apparently set off earlier in the month. Now the question is, how were they able to get past the closed borders? Well, we know that this is Africa. That's a very good question. And we do know that this is Africa. We know that in Africa, if you want to achieve anything, you are able to find a way. And of course, we're trying to change that narrative, but we have seen a lot of reports around lapses in border closures. We've seen that there's still opportunities for people to cross across, uh, go across Africa and get through the borders. For instance, in Nigeria, we had the case, the case when Oshun State had its incidence of coronavirus and how it came in. It was people that came in from neighboring African countries, Nigerians, who wanted to return home, according to them. That still brought it in. So we can see clearly that as is going on here, that if they've been able to get to the Niger Libya border, that and they came and we have over majority of the migrants that have been reported to have done this were Nigerians, the Malians, Cameroonians, and Guineans, but they did go through borders. So we can see a clear case of border lapses. And in this case, it might be a call for African governments to actually look at the security measures that they have put in place to ensure that borders are tight and there's no porousness in our borders to be able to curb coronavirus incidents. Now, Anita, what is the risk that some of these illegal immigrants are infected with the virus and that these transit camps have become breeding ground? Oh, well, yes. You see, the transit camps, as it has, has become now, have major breeding grounds. That's also one of the major reasons, and the risk that migrants face is that in those camps, there are a lot of unsanitary measures in place. For instance, let's start with most of the camps, there's a, camp, a few of the camps in Europe, are meant to house about a thousand people. So these camps are supposed to be places, they're not temporary places, they're supposed to be, you go through these camps to see if your claims can be properly processed. So are you coming in as a migrant? Are you looking for asylum? What exactly are you seeking? Let us go through your papers and check if you're going to be repatriated or if there are any grounds for you to actually enter the system. So they were never made for people to stay beyond a certain period of time. And they were also created to accommodate a certain number of people. So you're finding overcrowded camps, you're finding the risk of infections doubled, in fact, multiplied, not just doubled. Because, and they're also having issues where recently 200 camp, camp residents were rendered homeless as they fire caught in a camp in Samos. 
And so you find that they are willing to help mentally, Thank psychologically, you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. This is all we can take. Thank you so very much for your time there. And please do keep safe. Thank you very much for having me.